What does success look like as a mom at home, as a homemaker, as a homeschooler? Is there such a thing as success? That's what we're going to talk about today, and I hope you will stick around for this encouraging word. I am Misty Winkler, classical homeschooling mom of five. Welcome to Simply Convivial. You know, simply getting more done often does not really matter. We need to be doing the right things and focusing on what's important. And sometimes that doesn't always feel successful. So rather than trying to determine whether we are or are not being successful or diagnosing what we need to do to be more successful as mothers, we need to think about growing in fruitfulness as Christian women. Fruitfulness rather than success should be our goal. So today, let's look at what it means to be fruitful, how it's different from success, and how this metaphor can change our mindset in the midst of the day today. Let's dig in. So naturally, we sit and at the end of a day and evaluate how our day went, how we did. And we think, was it good enough? Did I do well? And if we think in terms of success or doing well, we need to be careful of our metaphors and careful of what criteria we are using to evaluate ourselves and our lives. Because it's so easy to slip into the worldly categories of success correlating to numbers and quantifiable results. And we know in our lives as mothers at home, it doesn't lend itself to that kind of evaluation. This is a blessing in disguise because we are then not able to easily fool ourselves into thinking that we are doing well in terms of worldly success. But that doesn't mean that we give up. It doesn't mean that we say we are not successful at all. And it doesn't mean that we ignore that nagging feeling that we need to do better. That little nagging feeling is the recognition that we need more and more sanctification all of our lives. The Holy Spirit is working inside of us, prompting us to more and more walk in his ways, more and more obey scripture. And that is fruitfulness, not quantifiable success. So if we shift our metaphor into one of fruitfulness, we will see that this is an organic metaphor. It means it's messy and it's a process. It's not a machine that is regular. All you have to do is flip the switch, turn on the power, and you have the widgets coming out one by one automatically. And you can count those results. Instead, you have a tree producing fruit, an abundant harvest of fruit. But fruit takes time to grow. It takes time to ripen. And there is work that has to be done for a tree to produce healthy quality fruit. One of the differences between these two understandings of improvement and reaching our goals is that with the fruitfulness metaphor, It is clear that we aren't switching our own crops, (laughs) choosing what we're producing, choosing the seasons and the production rate. All of these things, the, the tree, the branches, have nothing really to do with. Their job is to get the sap out, to put the leaves out, to absorb the sunshine. And the natural outworking of those ingredients is the fruit will be produced. And the tree doesn't necessarily get the credit for it, although the tree can be healthy or unhealthy and produce better or worse fruit. Still, even when the fruit is good, the credit goes to the farmer. And in this case, in this metaphor, the Holy Spirit is the cultivator. That's why they are fruits of the Spirit. They're being produced in our hearts through the work of the Spirit. The ingredients go in, 
God's word, our trust and reliance on God, our connection to his body, the church, our obedience and our grateful praise to him. All of these things have a natural outworking, an inevitable outworking. And that doesn't mean that it's not work or that it doesn't take effort, but we will see them grow more and more in our lives. We'll see the desire to put forth that effort more and more through the grace and strength of the Holy Spirit. So when we feel that desire to do better, when we feel our failure and our need for improvement, we need to channel it properly, not towards more measurable goals, but towards repentance and dependence and pursuing those fruits of the Spirit, living them out more and more and praying for them more and more in our lives, which of course will mean that we'll have opportunities to practice them. And we can be grateful for those opportunities because they are opportunities to bear fruit. And that's what we actually want to do. We want to bear the fruits of patience, love, hope, joy, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. We want to see these more and more in our lives. And with the help of the Holy Spirit, we will. Now you'll notice that so many of those fruits of the Spirit actually address our attitudes. That's why we need to organize our attitudes. We need to set them on fruitful paths. If you know that you are in need of an attitude adjustment, an attitude alignment, then I have just the workshop for you. I gave this workshop a few weeks ago, and it's free to watch the replay right here on YouTube, all about how to adjust your attitude about your home, your life, your family, and yourself. All you need to do is click the link right here that will take you to the workshop. And you will get three practical steps for organizing that attitude. Just click right here and you'll see the workshop and watch that next. If you want, if you need more content like this in your life, then you know what to do. Hit subscribe, hit the bell and watch that workshop. I'll see you around next time. And until then, repent, rejoice, repeat.